Today, I'm putting two bullpup rifles head to head. In my right hand, we've got the Krell Puncher Breaker, and in my left hand, we've got the FX Wildcat Mark III with the carbon tank. Now, on first appearance, these rifles look very similar. They're both bullpups, they're both black, they're both side lever action, they're both multi-shot, they both have weaver rails. But they are both poles apart in price. So let's find out if the price difference and the quality difference match up. Test one, chronograph report. These guns have come straight from the supplier, so they haven't been touched at all. We're gonna start with the Kral and we're gonna use JSB Exacts 15.89 grain because both rifles are in 2.2 caliber. So let's do that now. So the results are in. The Kral, which we tested first, came out across 10 pellets, averaging 10.66 foot-pounds. The FX, again, across a string of 10 pellets, came out with an average of 11.05. So, on to the next test, which is accuracy. So I've just zeroed each rifle in at 40 yards, and now we're going to have five shots with each rifle and see how tight the grouping is between them. Bit of a breeze today, but not too much. We're gonna start with the Kral, so let's get to it. help if I cocked it. Right, that's five shots with the Kral. I will mention, if you're gonna buy one of these, put high mounts on. I've put mediums on. I'm really having to uh, camp my head over to get a clear view through the scope. So I'll test the FX now. Just need to get the trigger cam sat on it so you can see what I can see. And uh, yeah, then we'll compare the results. Immediately, that's more comfortable. These mounts are set at the right height. Um, probably not very fair on the Kral because if I'd put higher mounts on, my head would have been in a better position, but this is more comfortable with the way I've set it up.
Okay, it's clear that the wind's dropped since I zeroed this in. So I'm just gonna dial it in and then we'll run it again. <sighs> right, we've re-zeroed, so let's go again. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so there's going to be loads of people that are going to think that I'm trying to make one rifle look better than the other. But genuinely, I'm not. So, the results with the FX just there were, as you can see, first shot was somewhere around the middle. And the following four kind of trailed up here. Now, even if there's a bit of wind, it's quite consistent. And I would have expected them to be uh, a very tight group, or at least all in the same sort of area. This was the Kral. I think it was my first shot that went high. And then the following four are here. So, there's at least three in that one. I'm a bit confused, if I'm honest. Um, I've just moved the target 10 yards closer and I'm just gonna run the FX again at 30 yards instead of 40 and just see if that makes any difference. And I know that FX tend to use JSB exact for their testing and that's the same pellet I've used, so um, I would have assumed that that would have been, been all right. But anyway, I've moved it 10 yards closer, so let's see if it does any better. Right, let's see if that made a difference. Okay, so moved it 10 yards closer and here are the results. So clearly four in this area and a couple not so accurate. But I would put that down to me rather than the rifle or the wind. Um, but the proof is right there. I haven't done the crawl at 30 yards. It performed well at 40. This was more of a test to see if it was the pellets that the gun didn't like. And as you can clearly see here, the FX hasn't done as well. I'd say that's a point to crawl. Um, point to FX on the chronograph report. Point to crawl on the accuracy. Hmm. I am a bit baffled at that. 
So that was the accuracy test, and I was very surprised at the results. Now, I could spend all day going through lots of different pellets and seeing if the Kral or the FX group better or worse with a series of different pellets, but I'm keeping it fair. We used one type of pellet, and I do believe that that is what FX test their rifles with. Kral use RWS Superfield, so it wasn't like I was being biased towards one or the other, but a very interesting result. I did mention that we do have a bit of a crosswind today, but nonetheless, I can't really make excuses because the Kral still did well. So, you know, there we go. But anyway, on to appearance. The FX, in my opinion, looks better. It is very well styled and of course you get the carbon tank and you do get a regulator you do not get a regulator in the crowd um this rifle is substantially lighter than the crowl the crowl is a bit of a lump i'm not gonna lie and uh, this isn't this is a joy to handle and it looks great and i think it is a great piece of engineering but there is a thousand pounds, sorry, more than a thousand pounds difference in both rifles. The Kral retails for the rifle on its own at 470 pounds. The FX retails at 1,560. So stylings on the Kral. I really like it. I think it looks really cool. It is very compact, which does add to the weight. I mean, this is a lump. The FX is substantially lighter, but it does have a carbon tank. It balances a lot better, does the FX, to be fair. I am not a massive fan of where they've put the side lever on the breaker. The one on the FX is in a much better position when you're using it practically. On this synthetic version of the Kral, you do get this little hidey hole here where you can uh, store a spare magazine. The trigger on the FX is better, it's crisper, and you get much more of a two-stage trigger. The triggers on these are absolutely fine. I mean, we are talking about guns that are over a thousand pounds apart in price, so you, know, you can't ask for the world. But which one should you buy? Well, if I had 1,500 pounds, sorry, closer to 1,600 pounds in my pocket, I still would buy the FX probably. I don't know if it's a brand thing or um, a quality, Thing. you can tell the quality difference for sure but if you've got 500 quid and you don't have 1600 you could buy the more accurate one i hope you've enjoyed this video and i will be bringing you more videos very soon